Azure Data Factory Data Flows has a built-in mechanism to be able to handle error rows when writing data to Azure SQL Database. Let me demonstrate that for you. So on my data flow canvas on the screen, I already have a very, very simple data flow that is just used for the purpose of demonstrating for you how to turn on and off the automatic error row detection within Azure Data Factory's data flows. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my CSV file of incoming movies data. I'm going to uh, perform just a single step transformation, which is a very simple drive column, which is taking the movie column and uh, essentially just casting that to an integer. Then I'm going to write that to my Azure SQL database. I have a test table that I created just for this purpose called junk table. Right? Great name. Let's take a look at that. And let's figure out what that is doing and why this is going to possibly cause some error rows. So I set a series of constraints on it that can cause the conditions that you would find when you write to an Azure SQL database uh, often. And some of those are going to be because I have set a small size for the property called the column called name on the table of just 20 characters and I also have the identity property on on the ID column so when I go to write as inserts I'm going to have to set the identity property on that'll cover that error and then when I'm writing data I'm gonna get possible tr uh, truncation into the column called name because the data that I'm writing from my movies file over here is going to be mapping into that name column I'm going to be mapping the title of the movies, and those movie titles are going to be very often more than 20 characters, although sometimes less. Now, when you are writing data into an Azure SQL database um, data set sync, on the settings you will now see at the bottom a, co a category called error row handling settings. The default is what's been uh, since the beginning of Data Factory's data flows, which is uh, when the first error is detected when writing to Azure SQL Database, the data flow will fail. You'll now have this option to change it to continue on error. But before I show you that, let me actually demonstrate what's going to happen here. So let me take this data flow and let's take it into a pipeline. Run debug. We'll run in debug mode. This will be fine. This will be running from my already warmed cluster. And this will show you what's going to happen. Now, because of the constraints on my SQL Database, the both the uh, smaller size column that I'm writing to, as well as the identity column, is going to cause two different error conditions per row. And the first time it tries to write to this ID column, it's going to fail right away because the identity um, property is set on the ID column. And in my mapping for my sync, I am in fact mapping the ID column, and these are inserts. So in the settings, you see that I'm allowing inserts. So now let's see how this is uh, treated by a data factory. And remember, I have this set to the defaults, the current existing uh, property or setting of all your data flows in data factory today, which is going to be to fail on first error. And so right away, this failed. This did not uh, write anything because this simply failed. So let's go back and let's take a look at the table in my management studio and there are no rows. <clears throat> so no rows were written. It failed right away, it failed fast. And let's go back to the data factory and we'll error outputs from the activity execution. We can see that it failed because you cannot insert explicit value for identity column in the table. And that's because the identity insert is set to off. So now the way to, um, to write uh, rows in this situation is going to be back in your data flow. This is a situation where the error row handling is not going to be able to skip that because that is a constraint on the database table. So instead what you have to do here is you need to go into both the pre and the post processing scripts. And what you want to do in this case is set the identity insert to first on for the pre-processing so that it's a, it allows the inserts, the SQL database will allow your inserts. And then at the end you can switch it to off so you can go back to the state that you were at previously. So we'll execute again and we'll leave the stop on first error, the default setting as it is, let's go back to the pipeline. We'll run this debug again. Management Studio, we had no rows. So let's wait for this to run for a few seconds, then we'll come back and we'll take a look at what a uh, data factory does this time. So what happened was it failed again, uh, even though I have the identity property, uh, the insert identity set to allow for the pre-script and then back off in the post-script. 
Let's take a look at the air output this time. So we got past that error, but now it is failing at the string or binary data will be truncated because of the, the size of the data that I'm trying to write into the sync is many times more than the 20 characters allowed in the target database schema. Um, and we can just uh, sort of eyeball that a little bit here in the data preview just to take a look at that. Now you could also handle this condition that I already have defined in the documentation for error row handling. You'll see that today here where I, where I talk about taking a uh, using a conditional split to look for the length of your string columns. Uh, that's a more of a manual logical processing where you need to know that that's going to be the condition and you need to also do that uh, either on a using a, a, a pattern a rule based mechanism uh, pattern matching or uh, column by column. So in this case what's going to happen is on the uh, on data factory for these long titles they're just going to fail. So if I go back to that uh, to the management studio and I run a select none of the rows came in because data factory just failed when that condition was met when writing uh, to SQL database using the driver. Okay, so now to, to fix that, you can either use that mechanism with the conditional split that I talked about in the documentation, or within the data flow, you can now go into the sync settings and you can take the error row handling, take the, um, change that to continue on error. And when you do that, you'll have options. You can either say, just continue on error and continue on. And I don't even want to know about uh, what failed or any of the details of the rows that had errors in it. Or you can say, um, output the error rows to a uh, storage account. And you can also then uh, indicating how you want Data Factory to report the final status of your data flow activity when it executes. And I'm going to set it to report success on error. I, I'm, I'm okay with some of the rows not succeeding. I just want the ones that meet that um, truncated criteria. And so this will work just as it is. And so let's go ahead and let's run it with that condition, with that sound property now set. So we'll do a debug. And while this is running, let me go back and review what we did. So we set um, the identity insert on so I can uh, get past the identity property on the ID field. And then for the smaller columns, the truncation, I'm saying continue on error. I am going to um, report and output the error rows. Now you also can set the transaction commit. This is really just saying that um, either commit the entire set of rows um, in one uh, single batch or, or do a single transaction commit. The default is single. I'm just leaving it as that. And like I said, I'm going to also report success when this completes, even though there are rows that error. You have your options to set on that. Um, and then the uh, you'll see also, so I see that the pipeline succeeded. But you also see then that in the uh, error rows that get reported into your um, storage account, you will have the details of the original data as well as the error that was reported so you can reprocess those rows later. So this succeeded. And if you take a look at the monitoring now uh, for this execution, if I click on the sync, I can see that um, there were 9,128 rows that were fully calculated. We essentially did a two-phase commit on this. We looked at um, what would happen if they were committed and then the ones that didn't, we, we report those. And we tell you that 2,749 of them erred and the rest all succeeded. So you get that output, you get that detail in the output in the monitoring and it showed the success status at the end. Now let's go look at the errors. So what you get in your error output, and this is in my storage account from that execution, you get the full contents of the original data, which is these three columns. Then you're also getting the uh, SQL operation that was uh, that was attempted or that was reported, and then you get the details of the error. So you'll see the um, the data here is the name of the movie, the, a year it was released, and then the genres. SQL operation was an insert, and then the error reported was 2628, which is the string or binary data would be truncated. And so now you can take this, you can use it for your uh, logging telemetry, and you can also then reprocess this data uh, you're done so if you want to maybe go back in then reprocess it perhaps <clears throat> truncate it here within the uh, data flow reprocess it and then it'll land that data later so that's error handling with Azure SQL database and data factories data flows thanks for watching